coming up next on Hoover's Arkansas Football. Highlights from a wild and crazy night of high school action around our state, including the 118-point night at Nashville as the Warren Lumberjacks came to town and the shocker at Shallow Christian. Highlights, pre-game pep talks, post-game reaction, and the latest revised Hooton's rankings straight ahead. You make sure you're physical. Well, I'm riding on the ball game. You get that blood in your eyes and you play with heart. There are four classifications of high school football in Arkansas. Double A, Triple A, Class 4A, and of course Class 5A. Last night, in three of the four classifications, the number one team was knocked off. It was a wild night for high school football after a long week for so many. And we have highlights tonight on Hooton's Arkansas Football. I'm Chad Hooton. Thanks for tuning in. We have highlights from Shiloh Christian and Pulaski Academy. The shocker up in Springdale last night as PA and Shiloh lit it up with a bunch of points. The Hooton's Arkansas Football cameras were down at Nashville last night where Nashville and Warren combined for 118 points on one night. We have highlights of those two games and many more. Coming up in the next 30 minutes, it's Hooton's Arkansas Football. We're glad you're with us. Stay tuned. We'll get started with a look at Class 2A straight ahead. Hooton's Arkansas Football is brought to you by Sonic. Let's get to the patriotic pit where Boxite rarely loses, particularly to Friday night's opponent, the Mount Ida Lions. In fact, Mount Ida had not beaten Boxite on any turf since 1993. Nothing new Friday night, at least for a while. Boxite requires just two plays to score on its first possession. Junior Justin Hendricks takes the tall sweep and battles for some good yardage. This is the outside veer. Damian Soule takes the handoff, cuts outside, and motors down the sideline. Look at him go. Mount Ida's Jay Richards does not give up on the play, but with just 37 seconds gone, Soul and Boxite lead seven to nothing. The run sets up the pass. On Boxite's next possession, senior quarterback Josh Seaman fakes the handoff, rolls to his left, and hurls the football 40 yards to Brandon Johnson. The Miners complete the drive on the ground. It's Soul covering the final yard for a 14 to nothing Boxite lead early. But Mount Ida, which knocked off Magnet Cove last week, did not fold. The Lions could not run, so junior quarterback Josh Ellison pump fakes and throws deep to classmate Mikael Jones. Mount Ida overcame penalties and negative rushing plays to march 73 yards for a confidence boosting score. Jones hits Ryan Roberts in the corner of the end zone between two box side defenders for the touchdown and it's 14 to seven. Boxite never responded as Mount Ida scored 28 unanswered points and left the pit with its biggest victory in a long, long time. Final score, 5 AA South leading Mount Ida, 28. Searching for answers, Boxite, 14. Class 2A Mayflower seems to have Class 3A Central Arkansas Christian's number. At least last night, the Eagles had little trouble in West Little Rock. On Mayflower's first drive, that's junior running back Jonathan Jones getting around the end for an eight yard gain before Herb Grigsby, the little fella, spins around, gets through some shoddy tackling for a 15 yard pickup for Mayflower. Jones will then sprint straight ahead for a 17 yard pickup and that sets up Deontay McEwen, the big senior, a guy who's had three knee surgeries and had not scored a touchdown since his ninth grade year. Here he goes, bullying his way in for the short touchdown run and the early Mayflower lead. McEwen would go on to score three times on the night. CAC did come back and take a brief lead in the first quarter. Justin Bentley fields a punt at his 10 yard line. He's headed down the right sideline and he's gonna go the distance. 90 yards for the touchdown. Dustin Bentley, look at him go. Zach Dennis added the extra point. The Mustangs were ahead seven to six. 
but Mayflower and five foot five inch running back Carl McKnight. Look at the little fella. He kept finding running room all night long and Mayflower wins this one. Final score, Mayflower 33, CAC 14. Earlier this summer, Pulaski Academy stunned Shiloh Christian in a seven on seven game. Last night at the Field of Champions in Springdale, the Bruins were out to prove they could do it when it counted. How about this for an opening play? Bruin quarterback Thomas Thrash lines up at wideout and takes the reverse before throwing the strike to Quentin Jones. He's going to go 73 yards for a touchdown on the first play of the game, and the Bruins wouldn't look back. Thrash led Pulaski Academy to five first-half touchdowns before Shallow inserted injured quarterback Rhett Lashley, who helped the Saints score 29 points. But Thrash ended the night with 545 yards passing and a state record nine touchdown tosses. Final score, undefeated Pulaski Academy shocks winless Shallow Christian, 62-29. And here is a look at Hooton's Arkansas Football Class 2A ranking. Shiloh Christian stays on top. The Saints have played three great teams. They went 0-2-1 against the big boys, Wynn, Springdale, and Pulaski Academy. Junction City's number two. The Dragons will be tough to stop now in the 7AA East and beyond. Ryzen drops to number three after last night's loss to Junction City. Carlisle is number four. They had a quality loss to Class 4A Pulaski Robinson. Charleston's number five, and they're still the class of the 4AA Conference. Hampton starts the second five. They're another heavyweight from that 7AA East. Then it's the Rattlers and Camden Harmony Grove, the Little Johns, and Coach Frank McClellan's Barton Bears. The second ten starts with the Mineral Springs. Then it's Harding Academy. Got a big win over Class 3A Highland last night. Gurdon got a win over AAA Prescott last night. Mayflower takes its annual victory from Class 3A CAC last night. Mount Ida checks in at number 15. They're on top of the 5AA South with wins over Magnet Cove and now Boxsite. Salem's number 16. Then it's Desert, the Miners from Boxsite, Hazen, and the Augusta Red Devils. Coming up next, more of Hooters Arkansas football. Class 3A highlights straight ahead. <laughs> Anytime a couple of teams from Jefferson County get together, bragging rights are on the line. And last night, Class 3A Dollarway had plenty to prove against Class 4A Whitehall. Dollarway tries to strike early when quarterback Eddie Ringo heaves it downfield, but Whitehall's cornerback Justin Smith is there in great position and makes the pick for the Bulldogs. Whitehall's quarterback Ben Roberts also wants to pass, but he's not going to get it off the big rush from Dollarway. And Whitehall has to punt. Matt Mulligan booms a dandy that is dropped by Dollarway's Chris Evans and Nick McGee before it lands in the arms of Whitehall's Jacob Johnson. Bulldog football. Whitehall takes over at the 30 and hands it off to fullback Dylan Blassengame. Ten yards right here. Then on the next play, Blassengame rumbles 17 yards for the early Whitehall lead. It's six to nothing but Dollar Wave would rally in the fourth quarter and converted its first extra point of the season to win. Final score, Dollar Wave 13, Whitehall 12. Pulaski Old Grove used a strong rushing attack to win seven games and advanced to the playoffs last year. The Hornets used that same formula last night in Garland County against Hot Springs High. But it wasn't just the running backs getting in the action early. Sophomore Garrett Matsumai fills a punt and tiptoes 40 yards down the right sideline. That set up the first of Lance Boykins' three touchdowns on the night. Boykins finished with 90 yards on just 13 carries. Later in the first quarter, Marcus Babbitt takes a pitch from quarterback Matt Pruce and scampers 21 yards. Two plays later, this is Cedric Mason blasting 34 yards for the touchdown, and the Oak Grove Hornets go on to win this one convincingly. Final score, Oak Grove 35, Hot Springs 7. On the hill in Nashville, the Warren Lumberjacks looked like they were running downhill all night. With 475 yards offense by halftime and a 56-28 lead at the break, the Jacks kept chopping in the second half. 
Here they come. Senior quarterback Reed McKinney and junior receiver Brett Smith. They're playing catch here on a 10 play, 65 yard scoring drive. Smith finished the night with nine catches, including three touchdowns. McKinney passed for a mind boggling, 672 yards and seven touchdowns. Junior running back Terrence Ingram finishes the drive with this three yard run. That made it 62 to 35. Warren blowing out Nashville, but the Scrappers responded with a nice drive of their own. This is senior quarterback Brian Pope finding his classmate Bruce White on the little screen pass, but the drive would end. Warren's senior defensive end Paul Harrison sacks Pope, and that killed Nashville scoring drive. A couple of plays later, it's Reed McKinney again, lofting one to Smith for a 36-yard touchdown, and Warren knocks off the number one ranked Nashville Scrappers for the second consecutive year. Final score, Lumberjacks 76, Scrappers 42. Hey, great job. Good, I enjoy it. We got to get ready for this conference now. Oh. You know what's up now? You know. Don't read the papers. Don't watch Hogan's. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got something. We got to this to take care of, guys. I want to win this conference, guys. Our receivers just made it look easy is what it is. Throw it up and let them go get it. That's all you got to do. I mean, they made awesome catches. Awesome. And here is a look at Hooton's Arkansas Football Class 3A rankings. There's a new number one. The Lumberjack train is on top after putting up 76 points at Nashville last night. Dollar weighs number two, then it's the Boonville Bearcats. Nashville drops to number four, and Pulaski Academy moves up to number five. McGee starts the second five, then it's Darnell, Gosnell, DeQueen, and the Redskins. Bald Knobs number 11, followed by Clarksville. They've won consecutive games for the first time in almost two years. Farmington's Cardinals are number 13, then it's the Jack Rabbits and Star City. Hamburg's number 16, then it's the Pirates, the Red Bugs, and the Red Devils, followed by the Ozark Hillbillies. <laughs> They mend broken bones and broken... First Security Bank. And we begin our Class 4A highlights with J.A. Fair playing host to Little Rock Hall last night with a whole lot of hype. There was mostly a lot of defense early in this one. Fair's Aaron Wallace is hit low by Hall's linebacker Aaron Walker and high by a bunch of friends. But on the next play, Fair's Carl Rice slices through the Hall defense and sprints 63 yards for an apparent touchdown. But it's called back. Holding, War Eagle scores, taken off the board. Undaunted, the War Eagles come back. Fair takes it to the air as senior quarterback Zach Davis hits Michael Campbell on a quick slant. Paul's Richard right out crashes through to sack Davis. Then on the very next play, Davis finds Campbell again for the touchdown. Fair led eight to nothing at halftime, found its offense in the second half, and rolled over Hall. Final score, War Eagles 32, Hall nada. The defending class 4A champs have a new coach, but first year leader Harv Welch is getting the same results out of the high flying Greenwood Bulldogs. Last night they were at class 3A D Queen. It was the Bulldog defense taking a bite early as junior Joe Dittmer snags an errant to Queen pass in the first quarter. And that would set up Greenwood's first score. It's junior quarterback Kirby Vitale throwing nine yards, the touchdown toss to senior tight end Cody Kofer. Vitale would finish with 20 complete passes on 38 attempts for 305 yards and four touchdowns. Quite a night for Vitale and the Bulldogs. On Greenwood's next possession, Vitale finds senior receiver Josh Leftwich on the out and Josh turns it up for a 71 yard touchdown. It would make it 14 to nothing. Leftwich also added a 29 yard touchdown a little bit later on in the game. The Queen threatened in the second quarter. This is senior quarterback Brian McClellan finding nice yardage around the left end for the Queen. McClellan and junior running back Zach Jones connected on third down, but a motion penalty brings the ball back and stalls D. Queen's drive. Greenwood struck quickly though, with Vitale hitting left, which on the fade, and that would set up this long juggling left, which grab. What a play. Look at this. Left, which hauls it in for what looked like a 21 to nothing lead, but the touchdown was nullified by an unsportsmanlike penalty. But it wouldn't matter in the end, as the Greenwood Bulldogs win big at D Queen. Final score, Dogs 31, D Queen 12. 
It was a packed house at Scott Field just off North University Avenue in Little Rock last night as Arkadelphia took on Class 5A Little Rock Park View. Arkadelphia beat Ashdown last week. Parkview was coming off a heartbreaking loss at Camden Fairview. And this was a wild one with plenty of big plays. Arkadelphia quarterback Paul goes and gets his pass picked off by Parkview's Karan Bryant at midfield. Patriot quarterback Antone James finds six foot six, 200 pound tight end Marcus Winston over the middle. It's good for a first down. But a little bit later, James is picked off by Chris Marshall, who returns it. Marshall going 55 yards the other way for Arkadelphia. The Badgers had returned a fumble earlier for a touchdown, and they led it 20 to 14 at halftime. Parkview kept firing, though. Out of the shotgun, James tests Arkadelphia's secondary, throwing deep for Calvin Moore, but the Badgers, Wesley Hale and Drew Hill, are there to break it up. And Arkadelphia holds on down the stretch, handing Parkview its second straight heartbreaker. Final score, Arkadelphia 39, Parkview 34. And here is Hooten's Arkansas Football Class 4A rankings. We've got a new team on top. The Moralton Devil Dogs were knocked off at home last night by the Stuttgart Ricebirds, so Hope takes over at number one. The Bobcats just completed a clean sweep of the elite teams in the 7 AAA. Alma's number two, then it's Osceola, the Monticello Billies, and Win Yellow Jackets. They're Stuttgart all the way up to number six with that impressive win over Moralton, which was number one a week ago. Watson Chapel's eighth, then it's Arkadelphia and Searcy. Greenwood starts the second ten, followed by Magnolia, J.A. Fair, the Golden Goblins, and Cross it. Newport's number 16, then it's Whitehall, Pulaski Robinson, Batesville, and Hot Springs Lakeside. Still ahead, Class 5A highlights and our Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. Now, more of Hooten's Arkansas football, brought to you by Lander. And we begin our Class 5A coverage with the defending state champs. Back at War Memorial Stadium last night, but the stakes were not nearly as high for Cabot, taking on a Little Rock Catholic. Cabot's senior quarterback, Stephen Perry, made some big plays, keeping for the long run here before Rocket sophomore Brad Green catches him from behind, and that would lead to this touchdown by junior Adam Baker, Cabot's bell cow this year. Baker finished with 23 carries for 125 yards last night. Catholic's Mark Eversman is a smooth quarterback. He completed six passes for 48 yards, but the Rockets had just 157 yards total offense last night, and that's not enough against Cabot. Final score, Panthers 34, Catholic 6. A pregame at Bryant last night included a jet flyby as the Hornets played host to Jacksonville. Bryant's high-flying offense is averaging more than 500 yards per game so far, with speedy senior Matt White running and junior quarterback Lance Parker throwing it around the yard. Parker finds classmate A.J. Nixon here, and he would finish with 215 yards passing on the night. Bryant led 31 to nothing at halftime. Its defense held Jacksonville to just 37 yards in the first two quarters, and the Hornets remain undefeated. Final score, Bryant 31, Jacksonville 6. And here is Hooten's Arkansas Football Class 5A rankings. Three of our top six teams did not play last night because they had Oklahoma schools on their schedule. They didn't play in Oklahoma last night, but were scheduled to Saturday night. Fort Smith Southside, Northside, and Bentonville all expected to play their third games before the week is over. Springdale is 3-0. They scored more than 40 points twice this season. In fact, they had 42 by halftime last night at Joplin, Missouri. Little Rock Central's number three with a huge win at El Dorado, 19-17 last night. Cabot's number five still far from last season's standards, but the Panthers led Catholic only seven to six last night in the first at halftime. Bentonville's number six, then it's Bryant. They led Jacksonville 31 to nothing at halftime over at Bryant last night. The Hornets play host to Sheridan and Pine Bluff the next couple of weeks. Van Buren's number eight, there's West Memphis after a big win over the Win Yellow Jackets. Benton's number 10 and undefeated. They play host to Texarkana and Sheridan the next two Fridays. Russellville starts the second 10, then it's Fayetteville, Rogers, El Dorado, and Conway. Little Rock McClellan's up to number 16. The number 17 team is the Pine Bluff Zebras. They've outscored Little Rock Hall and North Little Rock by a combined 82 to three. Mountain Home is number 18, then it's Texarkana and Camden Fairview at number 20. Now the Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. 
Greenwood kicker slash running back Kyle McGreeny has scored touchdowns and field goals for the Bulldogs while maintaining a 4.0 GPA and scoring a 30 on the ACT. So where does he find the time for it all? No matter when, how late you stay up, you have to get everything done and make sure you study. I, I just try to stay ahead and get things done before they need to be turned in so you know you have a little bit of extra time still. On behalf of the Marines, uh, United States Commandant of the Marine Corps, okay, Marine Corps jacket, there you go, okay, and congratulations. Right. So congrats to Greenwood's Kyle Magrini, our Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. Okay, thanks a lot Mark and congratulations to Kyle, our Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. Greenwood Bulldogs got a big win at D Queen last night. They will begin conference play with all the rest of the 4A and 5A teams and many of the AAA teams who haven't already begun uh, conference play. They'll do that next week, and we will have highlights of a whole bunch of them next week as all the teams get into conference play. Next Saturday, we hope to see you here again for Hooton's Arkansas Football.